Okay, the first thing I want to show you is I want you to imagine that you've opened up a book and let's say it's a, I don't know, sci-fi and you've got an alien main character and you start to live a scene with the character. We're in showing modality. We're kind of living it as if it were in real time. We're gonna get we're gonna get concrete sensory descriptions. The author's not gonna come in and tell us stuff. Okay? And we're just gonna get things happen. Now, a big key to decide between showing and telling is <clears throat> that watch for past tense verbs because these are going to be key, key things where things happen. You know, if we were to put the story on a, a timeline, we could have something like, you know, the alien got up, something happened. The alien ate his worm food breakfast. The alien went to work. The alien got cursed because he didn't like working with wrenches. He built a rocket and then he went to the store and bought a gold-plated spacesuit. You know, he went, he did, he worked, he sang, he danced. All of those become your chronology of your storyline. <clears throat> We're living it with the character. He sees things, he talks to people, um, he smells things, he feels the nice touch of his new gold suit, okay? And then, and then, maybe the author wants to come in Maybe after he eats the, his worm breakfast, um, the author wants to come in and tell us the history of worm cultivation on the planet. Random. Okay, so the author might come in and give us a telling detail that is descriptive, gives us some backstory. Time can pass unnaturally fast and jump all over the place. You know, back in his childhood, he has a fear of wrenches because um, descriptions are abstract. So after he hurts his hurts his thumb on the wrench, maybe the author comes in to say, it hurts, it hurt him. You know, we get told what to think. Maybe here we launch into a whole backstory about his childhood, and we learn that he had three parents and 14 siblings, and some of them had three arms. I don't know. Now, just for fun, I want you to realize something especially those of you who are taking French and Spanish. It turns out that in, in a lot of languages throughout the world, in fact, most of our European languages, when we are telling a story and we are talking about events that occur one after the other, in other words, when we're in showing modality, they talk about it and use a, a verb tense that is known in English as the preterite in Spanish as the preterito, in French as the passé composé. But guys, when you switch into descriptive mode and you're talking about their backstory, their childhood, you want to say something like, it was cold, he was wearing a shirt, um, he felt sad, where the author is telling us what to think, they shift into a verb tense, it's called the imperfect. Imperfecto in Spanish and imparfait in in French. Did you realize that that's what they're doing, my French and Spanish students? Hmm. Different verb tenses for showing or telling. You could you could also say that showing showing is narrative. Showing is the the narrator telling you the story. Whereas telling is descriptive. Okay, that might help. Now, of all those things I just said, one of the big keys to doing this little exercise is if we're in showing modality, Look for past tense verbs, okay? Things that happened in our story. Our little story here comes from a book called Flint by Louis L'Amour. It's a Western. We actually have a guy on a train, and the things are in order as they occur, but, but things are left out, so they're just kind of random to prove a point here. I'm going to get you started and then have you finish on your own. It is given to few people in this world to disappear twice. But as he had succeeded once, the man known as James T. Kettleman was about to make his second attempt. This is the first line of the book. Has anything happened yet? You know, did James T. Kettleman get up or make coffee? No, author's giving us backstory. It's talking about how, oh my gosh, at a time in the past, he actually disappeared. 
Okay, and we just get told that. So there we are in telling modality. This next one's a little tricky. People interested Kettleman only as prospective antagonists. Hmm. Can you see how the author is coming in and telling us about Kettleman's personality? Telling us about how he feels about other people. We get told that. And of the men in oops. And of the men in the car, only one seemed to fit that category. He was a straw haired man with a lean and dangerous look, like a wolf among sheep. We do get a concrete detail there. We find out that he's straw haired. However, the author comes in to tell us he's lean and dangerous. We don't, we don't have to infer that. You know, the guy doesn't menace Kettleman. He doesn't get up and curse. He doesn't pull out a gun. We just get told he's lean and he's dangerous. So again, we're in telling modality. We learn things about the character. We didn't experience anything with them. Notice the difference between this, those two, and this one. The train whistled and he got to his feet and stretched, the movement drawing the attention of the young woman. It is some distance to Alameda, she told him. There's our past tense verb. The train does something, he did something, she did something, then she speaks, she did something, and we are now in showing. We are living that scene with our character. Okay, I want you to give it your very best shot to fill in the rest of them, and then in the comments, I'll tell you if you did it right or wrong. It'll be awesome. And I hope that makes more sense. It's not particularly important to me that you, you nail it and get it exactly right, because it is tricky. You know, you, get, you can get sort of uh, confused. Showing versus telling, I don't know. Um, but the basic general idea is really key. Okay, watch for past tense verbs. Are we telling the story? That means we're in showing. Um, or are, is the author coming in to just tell us things? Are we getting description? Okay, give it your best shot, enjoy.